Fire Gang, Sean here. Welcome to the channel. And on today's episode, I'm headed out to the lot to begin the cleanup of those large four trees that the arborist fell on the lot yesterday. So there's lots of chainsaw work to be done today. And uh, I'm going to get a fire going, hopefully, get some of the brush burning. I'm out here by myself today because Lisa is at work. So, uh, It'll be a little bit slower pace than when I have Pyro Polly with me to help me get everything burnt up and cleaned up, but uh, I am going to go out and uh, start cutting up those trees and uh, burning some brush and hopefully getting to uh, try and use the uh, Kubota with the grapple bucket and see if I can move how big a section of that oak tree I can move at a time. Uh, I really have absolutely no idea. It's been a great tractor, it's quite powerful, but again, it's a compact tractor, so uh, that oak tree is incredibly heavy, I'm sure, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what it can handle. So stick around, and as always, let's see what we get into. Okay, gang, here we are out on the lot, and as we left off in the last video, this is the mess that we're gonna try and tackle today. So we're gonna get going on this. I think we're gonna start over here where the driveway is and try and get all this stuff cleaned up first. And then we'll start working our way across this pine. And then lastly, the giant oak on the other side. All right guys, seeing that we're gonna be uh, cutting a lot of wood today, I just thought I'd give a brief overview of one of the saws I'm using. Just turn it around here. And here it is, the Still MS-291. So this saw is a 55.5 cubic inch saw. Uh, it's considered a farm saw. So it's not your high-end forestry saw, and it's not a lower-end saw. I had already bought a uh, Husqvarna uh, XP550, I think it is, which is a pro saw. I spent a lot of money on it, and to be honest, I've had nothing but troubles with it so far. When it runs, it runs perfectly. It's a nice light saw and everything, but it floods on me a lot when I go to start it. This still MS-291 starts usually second, third pull at least, almost every time. It's a light saw, it's just a tiny bit over 12 pounds, you know, so I mean it's light in the world of chainsaws I guess, but definitely when you're wheeling it around doing this stuff, uh, it, it gets tiring. I have a bad back uh, and this definitely uh, tires it out quite a bit wheeling this thing around, but it's been a good reliable saw. I've put a new uh, chain on it, it's nice and sharp, so we're gonna start with a nice sharp blade. I've got the 18 inch bar on it. You can see it's uh, flipped upside down because as you probably or may not know, uh, the manufacturers recommend that every time you uh, change the, uh, the blade or sharpen the blade, you rotate that bar to keep the wear even on the bar. So I try to make sure every time I put a new blade on it or a sharp blade on it, that I, uh, I flipped the bar. So we're gonna get this thing started up and we're gonna get to cutting. As with all power equipment, you know, uh, I'm sure I'm gonna get lots of comments about, oh, you know, the uh, safety Susie or whatever, but you know what? The reality is I've seen lots of people injured in my lifetime and uh, I believe in personal protective equipment. So when I'm running the saw, you'll see I wear my chainsaw chaps, my helmet, it's got ear protection, also the visor uh, to keep stuff out of your eyes, gloves, and uh, always wear my steel toed and steel shank boots as I'm, uh, as I'm doing stuff with the saw. All right, I'm all geared up and outside of uh, it keeping me uh, safe, <laughs> clearly this stuff makes me look amazing too. So it is now, Let's see, 8.41 in the morning and uh, all set. Saw's full of uh, 
gas and uh, chain oil so it's sharp we're ready to go and let's see uh, how much uh, of this we can get cut up in the next hour or so all right let's get to it resembling a bit of an opening again. A bunch of stuff on the burn pile. And I'm going to start moving these two big logs and get them over into the log pile. I got a bunch of the other stuff over there. But uh, these are well easily probably 14 feet long. They're about uh, probably 10 to 12 inches in diameter, so they're a pretty heavy size log. And we're going to see how well the B2601 does with the grapple bucket to move these two logs. Well, as you can see, it didn't hesitate to move stuff this size. It picked that up like it was a twig, actually. It didn't struggle at all. I tried to pick both up. Really, what we're limited by wasn't so much the capacity of the tractor, but by the grip opening of this Land Pride 60-inch grapple bucket. It just isn't big enough to grab both of those logs in one... Uh, in one pinch. It may have been able to do it if I messed with it long enough just to get it strategically in there but again I am actually out here doing work so I need to just keep moving along so this thing like I said it's a beast. All right guys now on to uh, stage two this big pine. I want to make sure I get that cut up and out of the way and get it off of the uh, surveyor stakes that uh, it's covered up, so uh, that's uh, where we headed to next. All right, so just taking a little break. Saw ran out of fuel, so I just thought I would quickly go over what I use for fuel, actually. Um, I started out using the traditional, you know, mix-it-yourself gas. Uh, but I was having all sorts of problems with my husky saw like I said earlier and it was flooding out and it was running terribly so When I ended up buying this still I switched everything over and I'm using the moto mix stuff uh, From still it's a 50 to 1 high performance fuel for chainsaws bl uh, Leaf blowers weed eaters stuff like that. I, this isn't sponsored But this stuff is great because it's already mixed it runs really well on the saws. Uh, I haven't had any issues since I switched to it. It is a little bit more uh, money. Uh, and you know what, I can't really remember what it is per can. I could look it up, but uh, you know what, I bought a few cans of it and it's helped me clear this entire lot. So it's, it's not astronomically uh, more expensive, uh, but the stuff really, really works uh, quite well and came highly recommended from both the still dealer and the Husky dealer. So every time it runs out of fuel, that's what I fill uh, it up with. I also use, uh, every time I fill up, I also add uh, uh, chain oil to it, uh, bar oil. I am going to see if I can find a light bar oil for the winter use. 
I don't know much about it, but they say that uh, you can get your hands on some of it and it runs better in the cold temperatures. Today's not cold enough to really worry about, so uh, that's where we stand. All right, back to work. guys I think that's it for the day I've been out here for about four hours now and as you can see behind me we've uh, I've got the majority of the uh, big trees now brushed out cut up into log lengths the big oak over here I've got about halfway done but I was starting to make some mistakes and as I said in uh, I think the last video when I was talking about the wood splitter I'll put the uh, card up here for it um, you got to make sure you're not being distracted when you're using power tools and uh, I'm getting tired and I was making some mistakes and uh, I wasn't paying attention to where the tension was on the log and I got the bar stuck about three times and then I just decided you know what take your own advice Sean call it a day before you get uh, injured because you're tired so that's it for today's episode thanks for coming out please uh, hit the like button subscribe share the video with your friends it does help us and uh, we'll see you on the next episode